are looking at Bitcoin. I am extremely busy this week, unfortunately, so I've had to produce this a little bit late. But um, one of the points I wanted to touch in on here is um, historical uh, statistics. Uh, one of the things that most people in technical analysis, and this is mainly because they don't uh, really have, they, they don't go back in time to see the cause and effects of things. And it's cumulative in actions and reactions. And they don't do that. And that's a bad thing because there's a whole bunch of reasons why uh, markets go down to certain levels and above and, and so forth in the current market, you know, in the current time frame that they're looking at. But the reasoning being is because of what happened in the past. And they have a, a, a whimsical way of looking at the past. Um, well, I'm going to show you some of the things and I'm going to talk about statistics as well as I'm going to talk to you about the effects of artificial inflation and, you know, like, uh, let's say whales pumping prices up to ridiculous levels or whatnot and the cause and effect of that and uh, how it can distort geometries. Um, when a market is evenly balanced, uh, even if it's emotional and whatnot, the geometries generally will be in alignment with each other. Now, when a, a big whale or somebody comes along and they have an idea of what they want to do to the price, they want to lead it somewhere, um, that those distortions occur. And that, that has occurred ever since we hit the bottoms in the 3,000 range. And um, it became more and more evident as we went all the way up to here. And uh, the volatility has been great. Um, but what, you know, what, what's the cause and effect of what's you know, where it came from and all of this back here. Well, I can tell you that the vast majority of the time when you get an, an over exuberance of a move up from a bottom and so forth, uh, and you get disjointed uh, distortions, artificial pumps and whatnot, you usually have a more negative reaction when you do pull back. And so what would we be looking and expecting uh, from this? Uh, well, the first thing that we would be looking for is for us to go under this 7,400 level. Uh, that is the minimum that I would expect uh, before continuation higher. Um, but more than likely, we're going to go under the 6,000 range and maybe even down to the 5,000 and, and maybe even lower. Uh, we could make, and let me clarify this, we could make lower lows that even break the 3,000 range lows. And that is because of the fact that what happens when you have exaggerations or artificial pumps is they invert from where they started from. So let's say that it started from this area here and went all the way up to um, 3,000, now an evenly balanced move back down of equal length, let's say three to eight, about 5,000 points. 5,000 here sends it all the way back down to the 3,000 range. And that's very possible, and, and it's kind of statistically likely that that could occur. Um, doesn't have to. Like I said, you'll always tell, uh, hear me tell you that nothing has to occur. This is all about statistics and what has happened in the past, and those are the things I look at, not what my opinion is or what I hope or believe will occur. Um, and that's an important reference. Now. This is disjointed geometry, as we're seeing here. Things are leveling out. Um, there's no impetus to go any one direction like we could have shown um, the little triangles and so forth. Now, my belief is that, you know, the geometry doesn't have to um, be perfect. It never generally is. And depending on different market facts and criteria, um, you know, you can get uh, imperfect geometry very easily. It can extend like this versus going and staying in alignment like this. And that's mainly because of the fact that when you have whales or a group of individuals that are trying to uh, lead the price, they distort the market view. It confuses, you know, it's, it, it's not natural. Um, the move said if we went back in the earlier in the year when everybody is really into the marketplace, right? When we had extreme hype and, and extreme 
just tons of people, uh, you had more of a natural marketplace where the whales were less able to affect. They still could affect, but they would do it in a shorter term um, basis because of the fact the volumes were over them. It was too big for them and they didn't have enough money to go over and, and push it. So what happens when they, they have a more evenly balanced market or uh, uh, on the reverse, a market where it favors them, where they control most of the um, length, they have to wait for the, the little guys to accumulate and, to, uh, and come at them. Um, whereas before the little guys were so, so many of them that they would happen very quickly and rapidly. And that's where you get the emotional big up and down movements that was much easier to take advantage of earlier in uh, 2018 compared to now which is more difficult. And this is mainly because the the, they, the whales are able to manipulate the prices. And I've seen this in other markets. And you know, I've been doing this for way too long, longer than the average person here, unfortunately, has been alive, <laughs> who trades crypto, who are in their, their 20 or 30s. <laughs> um, so I've been doing this for about, what, 30 years, over 30 years. I've been interested in markets and so forth. and. You know, I, I, I don't really, I'm never going to subscribe to the hype and I'm never going to be an emotionally attached person that believes prices are going here or there. I'm going to tell you the statistics and what usually happens. And it's important that you listen because I have a, a great frame of reference. I've seen many Sigma 6 events. I've traded in them from 9-11 to uh Fujisaki, that uh, the, the nuclear meltdown, and I've seen a lot of interesting markets and crashes and uh, the Lehman, you know, um, debacle of uh, the derivatives market from the housing bubble in 2000. I've seen many different markets and many ups and downs, and I've seen the way they react. But one of the things I've always done is I've paid attention to the historical presence of the past compared to the, the here and now that we do in and so forth and I paid attention to how geometries work and and uh, what they ultimately mean and um, all right but getting back to where we are right now speaking of that let's take this off so my, my point is on the geometry is do not you know try to build a geometry and have it literally in your head as this is the way it's going to be because markets don't work that way um, notice observe and go back through history of charts and see how they react. If you want to have some fun and you want to learn, you know, to become better at TA, go through historic charts of different things, uh, stocks or whatever you're interested in. And, you know, expand it. You know, try different uh, ones and see how they they reacted. And uh, you can do that with the Dow. You can do it with uh, Forex. You know, the Euro, Pound, any number of things, and use different time frames and notice the geometries and the effects and try to correlate them to the what was going on in, in news and events and um, if you do that you get a better basis and understanding of the rationale of the dynamics of how markets really work not what you you're thinking in your head often people have a linear point of view and that's natural you you're taught as a child uh, if you work hard and you do this you get that and generally you do um, but in markets, it doesn't work that way. You could work hard, you can have, develop all the knowledge, and it can do the exact opposite. And uh, so you have to go over and balance your um, work and effort into seeing verse, you know, because uh, you have no effect on the market, to seeing what is actually there by observation and acceptance. And that's why a humbled point of view is generally... A better one because the person that has that humble point of view will actually pay attention to what happens in the markets most of the time and will uh, no longer try to draw points on there and say this is what the market's going to do because um, that's what makes sense. Uh, markets are irrational and you have to understand how to balance that irrational point of view. So enough of that. Um, where we are in the current market uh, we can see we have these three points that I'm going to focus on and I'm going to give you the rationale of uh, what's likely to happen and where we're likely to go. So let's say that's one, that's our high right up here, right? And then let's go and add number two. 
This is our first low, our reaction low. And then number three, which is our retrace. Uh, come on now, grab here. Thank you. And there we go. We have number three, our retracement. Now, generally, when you get your high and then you get your reaction low, from this point, it will generally go up to about 61.8, two thirds, or um, all the way up to around, uh, uh, let's say, the 80% range. And here it went up to like 80%. We can go to and grab a fib, you know, and we're just isolating this one small little movement right here. Use my favorite tool. So make it exact. All right, we can see that it went above the 61.8, so it filled that guideline right there, and it almost went all the way up to the 88.6. So generally, between the you know um, 80 to 88.6 is the higher volatility, that means you'll get greater moves uh, inverted to the downside it is usually what happens most of the time. So what I'm looking at right here when we do break, which is the odds are to the downside because of the geometry of this, as well as the percentages. It almost went up to that 88.6, so it has the higher ups lead to higher downs. And um, there, remember, this is all energy. and. Uh, Supply and demand, so people holding, they, they uh, do extremes that cause prices to go up or down to an extreme amount. So from everything that I could see in here, what we're doing, and we could pop all the way up to here and then cross back down. But we've tested this area down here in the 9,000 range two times. And this area here becomes more of, uh, it's undecided right now but it's looking, it's turning more red. So this is becoming more resistance as time goes on. Even if we spike up to here, or we could spike all the way up to here, the odds are that we're gonna break statistically uh, down from this point, this 9,000 range. Uh, first, we have the gap that's right here in the 84, the 8,500 area, I believe it is, on the CME. Um, logical has, resistance and support points and, and is a median average. If you remember any of my early vids, how I talk about the median average of price, it basically accumulates right in this 8,500 area. So that's your logical point, but that is not a stopping point, And that is really not statistically um, a good point of reference to either to buy and get long outside of looking for this point to be tested from at or under this point. So it's be more of a shorter term range if you know, if you heard what I said in the past that I expect it to go down to here and then maybe bounce up to here before continuations going down to here and under. Um, this is your most likely reference point between where you could start seeing real building of su support uh, that and under here um, all the way down to the 6,000 range. Now ultimately, statistically, remember what I said because these patterns over here are left and this is a big market. This is the biggest market in the cryptocurrency space. So this has a more global effect of supply and demand, kind of like the euro. Uh, there were pairs that you could trade, like the Swiss, um, uh, let's see, uh, verse um, any, any number of things against the Japanese yen or something like that. And their volumes were less. So you would have a greater... Um, uh, imbalance. Uh, it didn't have to technically fulfill the guidelines of a, a bigger pair like the euro versus the US dollar, um, which is more stable. So this should have the same cause and effects because it's the biggest one in the marketplace. So when I, I look at that, that is what's most likely to occur. So that's what I'm focusing on when I say that there will have higher stability. Example, the Swiss slash uh, the Zolti or whatever uh, you want to pair it up to you can do crazy things you can go down here and zoom all the way past up here uh, I could zoom all the way past down here and then spike all the way back up here. it could do something really crazy where because it's a smaller marketplace and you know it's more localized and any outside influence can affect it greatly whereas the 
the Bitcoin or the Euro or a bigger marketplace and it's more globally distributed. So you have less of the parabola effect from outside influences. It will have an effect that just won't be as severe unless it's a global catastrophe or global event that's occurring, which happens in cryptocurrencies quite a lot, right? We get these giant news stories that, and our, um, our markets are more localized in a sense from outside using from fiat and coming in and going out and so forth. It's emotional, but that's because it's a new market and that's fine. But anyway, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the numbers to get up to the down to here and then ultimately down here. And then we'll see what happens if we get a real big fear and, and craziness. Um, uh, you know, this is the only point that I see on the chart that uh, I would become uh, a big buyer, but I, I can't predict what's going to happen. Are we going to go straight down? Uh, are we going to go down here and then bounce up to there? Uh, what, what are we going to do, right? So I, I am planning and preparing based off of the history, uh, what we've seen in the past, and we're going to go from there. And um, so I'm prepared and I have my real numbers go right down here. This is a uh, would be a smaller point back up to here and then ultimately down to here and, and down to there. And then from here, if people really panic and we go all the way down here, some crazy news, Tether or, or um, you know, the U.S. government bans Bitcoin or something, you know, insane happens. Uh, we could see the, the bigger moves all the way taking out maybe even the lows and um, some craziness. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, that's the update. Nothing is really going on right here. We're meandering and I'm still looking for expecting to move down to here in the short term and somewhere in this range uh, and we'll see what happens. Other than that, I will update you uh, later in the week and have a great week.